Hi everyone, it's time for another roundup of exciting Blender tutorials, resources and projects. There's a bunch of interesting stuff in here related to geometry nodes, lighting, grease pencil, materials and all sorts of other stuff. So hopefully this gives you some interesting content to study and be inspired by, so let's get into it. So the first thing I have for you here is a collection of geometry nodes, resources and links by Francis Jasmine. They've created a Blender artist thread here basically organizing all these different links and collating them into a collection of three main categories. These are geometry nodes presets, node systems and tutorials and courses. For each of the entries in this list as a collection of links to take you to the different creators like YouTube pages, Gumroad, social medias and stuff like that. And you may recognize some of the people on here. We've got Arendale, we've got Bagatini, the person behind the Bagapai add-on. We've got BBBN19 on here who we'll come back to later actually. We've got Max Edge who we've recommended on the channel before for doing like really interesting Geometry Nose tutorials. The Blender Foundation of course, we've got Camerai, Default Cube of course and Intagmo. So there's a lot of really cool resources on here. I think you might find particular interest in the Geometry Nodes preset section because there's a lot of free stuff here to download. If we go take a look at the Higsas Gumroad page and then go to their node groups here. So some of this stuff is really quite essential for building up artistic effects in geometry nodes. They have their own version of the distribute points in volume node, which I know a lot of people have been demanding, as well as a variety of other really interesting things. And there's an install process for how to use the node groups on here as well. So there's just like a lot of really cool stuff to study on here if you're interested in investing the time in learning geometry nodes. This is worth a bookmark because there's so much to learn from. And I've also made a note of this on my Biogen Notion page as well, because I'll probably come back and use this as a learning reference. But moving on, the next thing I want to show you is this piece of artwork by Kevin, who is again someone we've recommended on the channel before because they've got a fantastic YouTube channel, which we're going to take a look at in a sec. But the artwork they have is this just stunning grease pencil based Nintendo Switch artwork. It's so retro, it's so vibrant, there's so many effects going on. It's just so beautiful, like such a well balanced thing to look at. So this artwork isn't actually new. This is something they've been revisiting over time. So if we go back and have a look down, here we go. If you'd like to see more, you can check out my video here where I talk through the creation process. Thanks for the support. So if we go to their channel in September 2021, they've provided a video showing how they made this. It's titled Remaking My Nintendo Switch After One Year in Blender and Grease Pencil. And you can see their original artwork here. So there are some really cool tips in this video. They even reference a tip they picked up from Pierrick here, who we have recommended before, about using a shader trick with curves to make it look like a speed trick which is really cool for doing these stylized animations. They also show a really interesting use of different grease pencil effects like the pixelation going on in the background and different blend modes to get like foreground and background effects kind of blending together interestingly. And overall it's just a wonderfully put together demonstration of how to use these quite complex tools to make something so well designed and I'm sure appreciated by many people. Now next up, friend of the channel Paul Kijeji has teamed up with CG Cookie to produce some content for them relating to grease pencil and comic book style content. This video in particular is called Storyboard with Blender's Grease Pencil tips for your short film. So basically, if you're interested in making or even planning a short film using Blender, in this video, Paul will run you through the different techniques for how to set up the shot. So this will run you through things like how to refine your sketches, how to get distance between the drawings for doing things like depth of field effects, he also tells you how to use the fill tool, how to use effects to add more detail. So basically here using the noise modifier to add some interesting animation to the smoke coming off of the character. And then he goes over animating the character, how to use the depth of field appropriately. And also quite importantly, how to swap between the different cameras to have multiple different shots within the same blend file. Now, I believe Paul will also be making more content for CG Cookie in the form of courses coming in the future. So if you're interested in doing kind of stylized drawing stuff using Grease Pencil in Blender, then this is definitely worth checking out. And if you've ever watched or listened to any of our podcast content over on the Blender Nest channel, you'll know how nice of a person Paul is. So I'm very happy to recommend it. Anyway, moving on, I've got something concerning for you. A lovely member of my Discord community, Donna, Donna Designs in 3D, has created a realistic peep animation. And peep, as many of you may know, is that candy? Is it a candy? Like it's an American kind of marshmallowy thing. I've never actually had one. I've been to America many times, but I've never actually tried one. But anyway, they decided to turn it into a realistic animation and it's weird. Let's have a look. I'll just play it for you and you can enjoy it. So yeah, I just think it's really well done. I was forced to see it, so why not burden you with this memory? But it wasn't just done in Blender, it was actually sculpted in Nomad, which is something I kind of want to try, Nomad Sculpt. I've heard lots of really good stuff about it. If you've ever used that software, then let me know what you think about it. Anyway, moving on, we have a new video by Rob from Decoded. This one is called How I Made a Spaceship Landing Shot in Blender. So it starts off with this really nice animation from a first person perspective. It's kind of sci-fi, industrial, and I won't show you the whole thing because I want you to go and have a look at it. But it basically progresses so you can watch this spaceship landing and dropping off cargo. And he basically takes you through the entire process of how he put it together. So we'll go through all the 
interesting things like how he set up the hologram effect for the panel which appears. And there was a really interesting point in here about using the Fresnel value of the layer weight nose to kind of give depth to emissive objects, which is something I'm going to use in the future. There's also some tips in here about breaking up repetition for like large scale environment pieces. He tells you about where you can get characters from and how to kind of cycle their animations indefinitely. And then there was also a tip in here about an add-on that's pre-built in Blender, which I didn't actually know about for getting like greebling effects. There are quite a few add-ons in the community for getting greebles, but I didn't know there was actually a free one which comes with Blender. And then there's also some notes about smoke simulation and then the kind of compositing and color grading as well. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, then go over and check it out. Oh, and by the way, there's a dog that makes a cameo in the video. So I'm not saying you have to watch it, but Anyway, moving on, Nugget, who we did recommend in a recent Community Roundup video for their Rain Shader, has done this really impressive art piece. It's actually a series of art pieces here. If we scroll down, we can have a look at them. So this is Kleine and Macro Photography. So this isn't really done in the traditional sense with Blender. This is done using the ray marching method. Now, ray marching is like a different way of rendering things in a scene by essentially disregarding regular geometry in favor of the use of things called signed distance fields or just distance fields or distance functions or signed distance functions. I think the terminology can be a bit loose. Basically, from my limited understanding and to use more programmatical terms, a signed distance function or field or an SDF as people call it is basically just an algorithm or a formula or a function or just whatever, which takes a point in 3D space and then sees how close that point is to the surface of the object which is being mathematically described in this function. And then the data it returns is just the distance to the object. You'll be returning different distances based on where that object is. And because the shape of the object is described mathematically, it means that you can get a virtually limitless amount of detail. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you this because I think it's really cool. Kind of seeing how Blender can be used in these creative different ways. But hopefully that gives you an idea for how stuff like this is possible because it's not regular geometry. Because I know people will look at this and think, wow, how much memory does that take up? Probably not as much as you think. The Giga Chad, Derek Elliott, has put together this lovely lighting tutorial, which also kind of serves as an interior design tutorial. If we take a look at his channel, it's called Lighting Rendering in Blender dash FF colon EP3, episode three, I guess. But it's like an hour long, and he basically takes you through the entire process, how to make every individual asset in the scene. There's a good discussion about lighting and shading. And I mean, he really goes for everything. So you'll pick up a lot of compositional tips here, a lot of balance tips. And I think it's something I could probably still learn a lot from, considering I've been doing a lot of lighting studies recently. I know that the long form content of his videos might not be attractive to everyone, but I like to think of these more as like interesting design lectures. Something you'd sit down with with a notepad and just, you know, subvert your regular attention span and just enjoy the content for what it is. And I think you'd actually come away with some really important ideas. And I think there are a lot of people that would agree with that because Derek has some just like really valuable content. Let's take a look at his channel. I know for a fact that his concept shoe modeling one is like super popular. I've seen so many variations of that. He's got product design content. I know he's like so popular with product visualization members of the community. So there's lots of wonderful stuff in here worth taking a look at. Plus also, who doesn't want an educator that sounds like Matthew McConaughey? And yes, he does get that quite a lot. <laughs> So moving on, Kamurai, who again I've mentioned in a recent roundup video, as someone who's been producing some really cool Geometry Nodes content, has made a new self-wrapping ribbons one, but this comes in two different versions, because there's a two-hour stream where he kind of breaks down the entire process of putting it together. Basically, it's like a more advanced version of shrink wrapping, like cloths and fabrics around objects. So it may be props for things like weaponry, it may be character models. It basically shows how to compose it procedurally using geometry nodes and basically how to get the artistic control with that. But it's not just a two hour video. There's also a seven minutes, 46 seconds version, which is much more condensed and digestible. The end result is really good, but there are some things to keep in mind about kind of intersecting geometry and having it stretch around shapes. But I think there are some really significant concepts you'll learn in here for geometry nodes. And one of them is how to change the direction of the ray cast. So you can see here about inverting the normal, and that's gonna be a really important point for getting this effect. See, I just really like that one. I wanted to share the channel again. So thank you, Kamarai. Okay, so the next channel is someone I want to give a shout out to. They're an enthusiastic content creator with a wide generalist selection of content available and their name is Ryan King Art. So there's a very nice variety of stuff to watch here. In particular, there's a lot of procedural material content, including some really important things that newcomers to Blender should really know about. Things like fixing the mirror modifier, how to rig IK, how to overlay decals over materials. And there's even stuff like a stylized character series Series here with this lovely penguin. So a lot of this content is really accessible, which I think is great. So let's see, they started just over two years ago. I remember them just appearing on the scene and they've done a lot of stuff since then. So I'm really happy to see them keeping on going. I think it's their goal to try and hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So best of luck, Ryan. I hope you get there. Keep making lovely content. And yeah, 
Next up, we're going to check in on one of my good friends, Ben, BBVN19. He's been keeping up with the Geometry Nodes content. So the two most recent ones are how to make cool spirals in Blender 3.0 and how to make relaxing waves in Blender 3.1. Let's take a look at that one first. So it's really satisfying animation, really nicely presented here. The whole point about this one is basically instancing objects on a grid, then learning how to drive their animation using drivers appropriately, but also by doing that on a sine wave. So how do we modify the values of the transforms to make that happen? In a very traditional fashion for Ben's channel, this is done in a very visual way, which I think is fantastic for educational content. So yeah, I really like that one. The second one, how to make cool spirals in Blender 3.0. This is a very important one about learning how to control curves of geometry nodes. So there's really important stuff about how to get that spiral shape in here, as well as how to get variable thickness with the final result. So if you're interested in enhancing your knowledge in that department, then add that to your list. And the final piece of homework I have for you today comes from Polyfjord. And I will say just before I get into it, Polyfjord sent me a just a really lovely message when I was feeling a bit down the other day. So I really appreciate them doing that. Like when in need, members of the community will come to support each other. So I really appreciate that he took the time to send me a nice message. But I wanted to recommend his latest video here, Art Prompt Challenge Magical Caramel Creature. Some of you might look at that and think, oh, that's kind of cool, but also kind of random. Why should I click on that? Well, because it teaches you something super important. How dare you judge a book by its cover? Let me explain. So Polyfield's been doing something really interesting recently, which is where he's designed this kind of randomization system to give himself new ideas for things to make, which seems really fun and really cool. And it's something I actually kind of want to try at some point. But anyway, the whole point of this video is not knowing what your final result's going to be when you start. This is something that most Blender tutorial creators don't teach you. It's actually something I've wanted to teach you and I have actually recorded a video about but I haven't published it, which is the ideation process. So working purely from your imagination and working purely from references are completely different skill sets with a significant amount of overlap, okay? This is something I've tried to teach people before. Some people think one is better than the other, that's not true. These are both creative muscles that I think you should try and encourage and exercise. But this is a fantastic way to flex and train that creativity muscle by sitting there, giving yourself a prompt and just going at it and throwing stuff at the wall until something works. So if you've ever wondered how tutorial creators can sit there and keep coming up with random but cool looking stuff, if you want to learn that skill, watch videos like this, because this is where you actually see the process unfold. So he'll go through different ideas of how to kind of compose this creature, kind of getting the general shape. He knows what he wants. He has the kind of feeling and the vibe of a utopian style. He's kind of being experimental about it as he goes along. But the important point is he's always coming back to this original randomly generated prompt. So it's kind of refeeding that inspiration loop of what to make. And by the end, right, and you can see like the different processes ideation is unfolding. By the end, you end up with something quite beautiful. And it's a lovely animation, all nicely done, satisfying. I feel like this animation tastes nice, which is like a weird way to describe something, but I'll stick with it. But I think there's like a hidden, maybe unsuspecting value in videos like this. So like I said, I've actually recorded one of my own. Now, what I mean by that is recently there was a video idea which I never did, which a lot of people have done variations of. And mine was what does like 100,000 cubes or like Suzanne's or whatever look like in Blender. With the idea being that when I passed 100,000 subscribers, I would do that, like an animation showing like 100,000 things in Blender. And I never did it. So I thought recently, let's just do it and use it as an ideation experiment. So I had nothing in my mind about what it should look like but I sat down put the camera on and recorded the whole thing so I know that I want a hundred thousand things mostly cubes let's find a way to present them so I went through the entire process I tried doing like a stadium type artwork but I couldn't quite get the framing right and it didn't look nice because I needed to kind of balance away where the cubes could be seen so I'm mumbling to myself as I'm doing it letting you know what I like and what I don't like and then adjusting it appropriately until we end up with quite a nice looking artwork so that process of kind of failing repeatedly but trying different things isn't something you often see in tutorial content. Now I haven't fully edited that video yet and I don't know how it's going to be like whether it's actually going to be like a good quality video by the end. So I guess when I'm done with that one if it's good I'll put it on this channel if it's not so good I'll put it on the second channel which is a place you should check out if you just want more content there's like discussion stuff on there behind the scenes things. It's like the place for people that just want more. It's our low stakes channel and also speaking of artistic challenges we're running a new challenge on my server now which is the emissive lighting challenge because I've been playing with a lot of light stuff recently. So the whole point about this challenge is make whatever you like but only use material lighting like physical material lighting so no lamps preferably no hdris or world nodes just physical objects emissive materials and make something cool from that and get creative with it because i use these all the time most of my artwork uses emissive materials but not everyone is used to using them and there's some really creative stuff you can do with them and a case in point about that is my recent drawing with light video which you should totally check out so yeah anyway that's your homework for the week 
So hopefully I've given you some interesting stuff to check out and study and just feel inspired by. So if you made it this far, the emoji for this video is going to be a hand clapping emoji. And that's because we're going to be applauding all the content creators who have made content for us. So if you put that down in the comments, it will let me know who made it this far through the video. And also, if you want to improve your artwork or check out what other projects I've been working on, then you can check out my other videos on the channel. But also, I have a collection of free and paid content and tools like add-ons and resource packs, which you can check out on curtisholderonline slash store. And if you want to help me contribute to the blender and wider cg community then you can sign up to my patreon at patreon.com slash curtis holt so thanks everyone and as usual let me know what you've been working on recently because your creativity helps to inspire me so have a fantastic day thanks for watching and i will see you next time